Welcome to Boeing Field. I'm here today for a press preview of Destination Moon, a new exhibit that's here at the Museum of Flight in Seattle for a few months, celebrating the 50th anniversary of the Apollo 11 mission. Fun fact, I actually worked here at the Museum of Flight in college uh, at the gift shop, and I get to come here as press, so that's awesome. Ted Hutter, the museum's public relations manager. I really am an honest-to-goodness aviation and space geek. So I am happy to say that all systems are nominal and go for the opening of Destination Moon, the Apollo 11 mission. We learn about the past, be inspired by it. We will then help prepare them for it and ultimately write those next chapters, or as Jeff Bezos says, to invent the future. There's one other reason why I, I think this exhibition is here. Neil Armstrong's sons were both here doing the MC and talking, and they asked Jeff, why did he want the exhibit here? And uh, absolutely stealing his line, he said, if somebody asked you if you want to borrow the 11, Apollo 11 capsule, you say yes. <laughs> Destination Moon is an exhibition uh, that celebrates that mission while providing context for the question, why did we go to the moon? The exhibition examines the birth of the American space program and sheds light on some of the more than 400,000 people that, that, that worked through the trials, tragedies, and triumphs of the 20 missions across eight years that led up to Apollo 11. Those of us who work in museums are fortunate in that we are not burdened with making history. Instead, we get to be the keepers, the chroniclers, and the storytellers of the greatest of, he of human achievements. You are cleared for TEI, that is trans exhibit injection. <laughs> So far, I am in nerd heaven right now. Amazing. As a scientist, I never get bored of seeing this kind of stuff. This is it, this is the real thing. This thing went to the moon and back. I haven't been down to the Museum of Flight in forever. It is an awesome place, full of history, full of inspiring stories. I'm going to enjoy my press pass. Hello, my name is Matt Hayes. I have the honor of saying I'm the president and CEO of the Museum of Flight here in Seattle, Washington. Oh, I started out as a volunteer here in wow. uh, 2000. I was restoring a B-17 World War II bomber. I did that for nine years, working with vets and Rosie the Riveters. And wow. Learned a lot more about life than I did about Ben and Cheap Metal, <laughs> I can tell you that. What else do you think people to need to see? I mean, There's some really human elements that I love here. We've got uh, Neil Armstrong's sons let us borrow some things like uh, the baritone that Neil used to play. <laughs> what does it mean to be right here next to Boeing? I mean, the great thing about the Museum of Flight is it is, it is right here where Boeing began. Oh, a absolutely. You know, we, we are a separate 501c3 institution. Right. Proud to be a not-for-profit, but Boeing's obviously in our DNA. We, we have some of their most iconic aircraft, the first ones they built, and most people don't know the story of them in space and how they were very instrumental in helping make this uh, moon mission successful. Thanks for having us, Matt. Yeah, absolutely. Nice to meet you. My name is Jeff Nunn. I am the adjunct curator for space history here at the museum. Okay, so I actually had the pleasure of meeting Jeff like six or seven yeah. years ago. We gave a talk uh, at a local bar. I was talking about data and data visualization and Jeff was talking about space and the museum. And how does it feel to have this enormous exhibit here. It's incredible. It's, it's, if you think about, okay, what are people gonna remember a thousand years from now? And landing on the moon is probably what they're gonna remember. So being able to be 
the host venue and involved in the project to uh, host the 50th anniversary of the moon landing with the artifacts that came back from the moon is indescribable. It's, it's incredible. What fraction of this exhibit is stuff from Museum of Flight? Mm -hmm. What's, what fraction is Smithsonian? It's really pretty close to a 50-50. So the, most of the Apollo 11 artifacts are all from the Smithsonian, but we have another number of other artifacts from the Apollo program that came from the Museum of Flight, and then also additional artifacts that have never before been seen here, mm -hmm. which we started having folks whose parents worked on the Apollo program, or they themselves worked on the Apollo program, who started reaching out to us saying, hey, I've got this this connection and this story, and it was it's incredible that we've been able to, to bring those stories, those very personal stories, into the exhibit. Thanks Jim, a lot, man. It's good to see you again. Congratulations. Thank you very much. This is amazing. Yeah. That's Buzz Aldrin's Euphonium. I played Euphonium in high school, too. The scene in movies, in Apollo 13, and so many others that you see of the families sitting on their couch, gathering around their TV. I've loved that they recreated that here. If you pause for a minute, you can appreciate just what this felt like to sit down with your kids, sit down with your family. That is not much space for three people my size to spend an extended amount of time in. So my family lore is that my dad had an uncle who worked, who was an engineer and worked on this, played some small part uh, in building the lunar module. One of the speakers this morning said that over 400,000 people across the country worked to help bring people to the moon and safely home back again. And I think a lot of families have that story, have that family story like mine. My name is Katrine Halpern. I'm the project director for Destination Moon, the Apollo 11 mission at the Smithsonian Institution Traveling Exhibition Service, or SITES. Do you get nervous when we send the only Apollo 11 command module across the country, or at this point are you totally chill with it? Yeah, there's no such thing as being <laughs> chill with it. Um, just this morning, as I was waking up, I was having anxiety dreams about something having to do with the command module. It's a thrill, and it's also an incredible amount of work with a very large team. The command module Columbia is a national treasure, and it is treated as such. And Basically, the answer of how we move it is very carefully, yeah, and that's, right. that's really the only information that I can give you, because right. everything else is kept secret. How long will it take when it gets back? Does, have, is there a re-restoration that goes back? When just, yes, does when it need it, to be fixed up after all this travel? It'll have some minor conservation done, just to make sure that there's some additional cleaning, just checking that everything is okay. Columbia will then be on view in a brand new gallery that's opening in 2022. And it won't be leaving any time soon right. again. Right. So this is really a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to have it traveling around the country. But you can see that with the medical kit, there are multiple pages with pockets. Each pocket is labeled with the particular medicine, treatment. You'll see that the bottom edge is rather ragged. And the reason for that is in the vacuum of space, the kit actually expanded. And so to get it back into its little cubby hole, they had to actually make a slash in order to compress the kit enough to put it back into its cubby hole. You'll notice that there are a couple empty pockets, not because those medicines were used during the mission, but there are a number of items that are class narcotics, and so rather than traveling as them as part of the exhibition, they are safely secured in a vault in Washington, D.C. <laughs> Something you're not going to get when it's back in D.C., and when you wouldn't have gotten if you've seen it in D.C., uh, is this, this feeling of texture. All the little details on the module that's so much more human and tangible when it's just sitting right here. I mean, the thing is like three feet away from me right now. It's unbelievable. Well, that's it for me with the behind-the-scenes look at the Destination Moon exhibit. You have to go see it if you're in town. It opens up in just a couple days, so get down to the Museum of Flight down by Boeing Field. It is spectacular. Of course, visit the museum. I I gotta get a couple things for the kids. <laughs>